Welcome everyone to the new Fly Fisher. I'm your host, Bill Spicer. On this week's show, it's all about pike. I'm guest of Malcolm Lewenberg at Cag Lake Lodge, and this is Pike Haven. 30 inch fish are an average here. We'll talk about the flies, the technique, and the equipment. Everything you need to know to take these big pike. It's gonna be another great one, so stay with us. We'll be right back. Let him go back to live another day. And away he goes. Great fish. Wow. Oh, baby. Look at that fish. Stop, wiggle, on the way down. The new Fly Fisher has been made possible thanks to the support of Algoma Country, That Real. Ontario, yours to discover. Orvis Sporting Traditions. Islander Precision Reels. Rail Riders Outdoor Clothing, the toughest clothes on the planet. Net Staff, the world's first waiting staff and net. On today's show, we're back in Algoma country, just north of the town of Nakina at Lewenberger's Cag Lake Lodge. Lewenberger's Air Service owns and operates 16 remote fly-in outpost camps, each on a different lake, plus a full-service fly-in lodge located on Cag Lake. Walleye, Northern Pike, Speckled Trout, Lake Trout, and Perch are abundant here. Many walleye weighing in at six pounds or more are taken regularly but I'm here early in the season for the Trophy Northern Pike that often tip the scales at 25 pounds plus. My guide for this most excellent adventure is Derek Cressman, manager of Cag Lake Lodge. Derek has been a guide all of his adult life and is one of the best pike handlers I've nice seen. healthy fish. Our arrival was late, so my first day was short. We decided to fish what is called South River, a hot spot just after the fish spawn. On the way over, we are treated to a rare sight, a young bull moose swimming. These are the sights that are regularly seen when coming to Cag Lake. Northern pike are spring spawners, and spawning takes place immediately after the ice melts when the water temperature reaches 40 to 50 degrees Fahrenheit. In general, this species spawns during the daylight hours on heavily vegetated floodplains of rivers, marshes, and bays of larger lakes. Afterwards, they move off the spawning areas and begin feeding heavily in the shallows where the water is the proper temperature. This is the best time to take pike on the fly. Got it. Yes, sir. He ran with me. Oh, yeah. He's taking line. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> All right. It's not that big, I don't think. Just real feisty. Feisty would be the word for it. <laughs> okay. Should be a barbless hook, but that's that's not a bad beginning. That's not a bad beginning. Nice start. Yeah. First fish of the day. Kind of skinny, but it's what, yeah. about 30 inches anyways, maybe 32. Yeah. Pretty close. Yeah. Wonder if that was the one that chased. It had to be. I think so. Yeah, he was He was just uh, too anxious to, I hope more take it like that. I hope that's the way that they take aggressively like that. Wow. Not too bad, good start. About 32 inch pike on first fish here. We've been fishing for 20 minutes. So uh, th this is a great spot. I love it here. Oh, wow. With Lewenberger's Air Service, we offer, offer a number of different opportunities. You know, uh, we have the, have the main lodge on Cag Lake as well as there's a number of outpost camps. We have 16 outpost camps for, 
for those people that are interested in, in getting off on their own to their private little lake. Uh, you know, we fly people in all the time for that. The fishing on the outpost lakes is outstanding as well as here. Here at the lodge we offer, offer three packages. We have a housekeeping package uh, where you do your own cooking. All the cabins are set up with great facilities to, to prepare your meals and, you know, an enjoyable accommodation while you're there. We also offer a modified American plan which allows you the opportunity to eat dinner in the main lodge but you can relax a little more in the morning, you know, get up at your leisure, enjoy your day of fishing, come in, unwind with a, with a great meal and uh, get right back out on the water afterwards. Uh, and then our, our full American plan, you know, we have a nice dining facility, you know, the meals are, meals are good, desserts are wonderful. You know, it's, it's really the all-inclusive fly-in trip. When the pike is alerted to potential prey, it will position itself for ambush. And only when the unwary bait enters its field of attack will it lunge forward. Relying on its sight and its lightning propulsion, the pike rarely misses its target. However, if the attack proves unsuccessful, and only rarely when the pike is feeding heavily will it pursue its prey. The majority of times it will not. It will simply return to its post and wait for the next opportunity. The fact that the pike will only rarely pursue its prey, the angler needs to adapt his technique to this behavior. A slow and erratic retrieve is best. You are trying to make your fly look like a wounded or sick minnow. Oh comes. yeah, here he comes. Come on, take it. Got it. <laughs> I like that. Haven't had a look at him yet. Trying to get him on the reel here. There we go. Oh yeah, it's a gator. Oh, that's better. Yeah. <clears throat> it's a gator. Colin McEwen would love this lake. He's a, he's a real pike fanatic. Oh yes. Oh, got him. Okay. You want to be on that side? That's fine. Come here, mister. Good man. Well, now that's that's a decent there fish. We go. It's, it's a, a decent nice fish. Healthy fish. Yeah. Want to be careful not to get your fingers too far in there. That's true. I, I, I found that out the hard way last <laughs> yeah. year. Thank you. Thank you. That was fun. That was fun. We decided to come in early as there were heavy storm clouds approaching with lightning. Always get off the water when this happens. Here at Cag Lodge we offer uh, quite safe and sturdy 14 and 16 foot aluminum boats. We put 15 horsepower Nissan motors on the back uh, so it gets you around the lake a little bit, a little bit quicker and again with it being a big lake it's, it's nice to you know, not spend all day driving around the lake to get to a spot, you know, with the little bigger engine it gets you there that much quicker and you get more time fishing and, and less time getting to the spot. Here at the lodge we also have, uh, you know, if, if the weather does, you know, put you off the water for a little bit of time or, or you don't feel like fishing that day, uh, we have lots for people to do still, you know. We've got a great area in the front front yard. It's a wide open space where, you know, you can play games. You know, there's horseshoe pits uh, in the lodge. There's, you know, satellite TV. 
We have Wi-Fi in the lodge, you know, so you don't have to be out of touch while you're here. It had rained hard all night and cleared by morning. I expected a tough day. Cold fronts will challenge your angling skills. This is mainly because fronts send most fish into a negative feeding mood. Rain, high winds, and overcast skies occur in the initial stages of most cold fronts. After the edge of the cold front passes, typical weather conditions are bright, blue skies, few clouds, low humidity, and a drop in air temperatures. These post-front conditions might be pleasant for the angler, but they make for tough fishing. I was hoping if I stayed out long enough, the pressure would ease and the fishing would pick up. We decided to run and gun and see if we can find active fish. The fishing was tough as I predicted for most of the day, but about 4 p.m. the heavy feeding began. Fish. Yep. Finally. <laughs> Small one. Oh, no, no, it's not a bad one at all. It's not bad. Get him out of those weeds. Oh, yeah. oh, it's a big one. It's a big fish. Big, big fish. I thought it was small at first, the way he grabbed it. <clears throat> Got to keep him pinned, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. Not bad. <laughs> I'm liking it. <laughs> yeah. I got him. Sorry, I can't say much, folks. I, I'm concentrating on this big fish. I don't want to lose them. And it was a, a hit, just like a small fish. It, it wasn't like a big fish at all. Just a slow down, all of a sudden it was some weight on there and I, I set the hook and on he was. Yes, sir! Ha, 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 ha! Now there you go. That's more like it. Hit that fly out. The next day started out with blue skies, but that did not last long. The heavy clouds moved in and it began to rain hard and would continue for the day. I remembered that fish generally feed heavily during the rain and stop when the skies clear, so I was encouraged. This guy grabbed it right beside the boat. That's one thing about pike fishing. You never, never pick it up too soon without looking first. Well, this, this is a good fish. I have to get him on the reel. Oh, wow. Mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's see if I can hold him there. Come on out of there. All right, all right, yes, sir. Oh, my, pie, my fly popped out. The advantage of barbless. Wow, wow, I'm excited about this. I've not been to a place that has so many big pike. So many big pike. Now look at that, folks. You can expect to catch that when you come here. 
This is, this is just unbelievable. Gator Haven. Gator Haven. Oh, wow. Well, let's get him back in the water there, Derek. Isn't that something? When it's raining, don't head in. This is generally when the fish put the feed bag on. They know that the blue sky high pressure is coming and it's gonna give them a sore belly. So they generally put the feed bag on and feed heavily. Oh, this is exciting. Oh, I like this. The rods needed for pike fishing should be stout, nine foot in the eight to nine weight class. This is needed for casting large, wind resistant flies and for the sheer power of these fish. Large arbor reels are best as they allow you to pick up the line faster. A smooth drag is needed to tire out the pike as soon as possible. A pike tapered line is also useful for casting large pike flies. Okay, so here at the lodge, every Tuesday night, we uh, offer a, a group shore dinner where you know all the guests get to get together and enjoy a meal uh, in the outdoors. It's, it's a really pleasant, you know, experience. And if you've never had a shore dinner, you know, you're, you're missing out. You need to, need to get up here and, and have one. Some of the wildlife that you'll find in the area around the lake, uh, we have moose, uh, good numbers of moose. It's, it's quite common to see a moose during your trip. Uh, we have caribou, you know, they're a little, little tougher to spot, but you know, we do have caribou sightings on the lake. Uh, there's a good healthy population of black bear. Uh, there's nothing, nothing better than seeing a mature eagle, you know, swoop in and, and take a fish and it's, it's something, it's a sight to behold for sure. Cag Lake Lodge is certainly one of the best lodges I've been to. The cabins can accommodate up to 10 to 12 people. 14 and 16 foot aluminum boats are provided and maintained every day to be ready the next time you head out. The atmosphere is relaxing and the fishing is outstanding. Not only for huge pike, but the walleye fishing is incredible also. I highly recommend you visit Lewenberger's Cag Lake Lodge for your next fishing vacation. Now, Derek, I've hit pretty good fish along this shoreline. Can you tell the audience why this has been so, such a good place? Well, Bill, we're real close to where they spawn out here in this bay, and you know they kind of move from their spawning area shortly after up into these rocky shallows here to feed on on bait fish. Any particular structure that we're looking for? Well, we got a lot of fallen trees along here and rocks, and you know, in around those fallen trees, a pretty good area to fish for sure. right in the rocks where I, where Derek told me to go in. And, and I've got another really good fish here. Man, oh man. Uh, oh. Super, super fish. Not much I can do with him if he starts running. You gotta wait until he stops. Ugh. I haven't even got a look at him yet. I've, I've seen part of him, but boy, another good, good fish. He looks pretty good, Bill. Looks pretty good, yeah. Wow, 
<laughs> this guy's got a lot of spunk. He's actually pulling the boat. <laughs> oh, man. Get out of there. Trying to keep him high, keep his head up so he can't dig in. Good thick fish. Good thick fish. Yes, sir! <laughs> nice job, Bill. Oh, Derek. <laughs> oh, Derek. Isn't that something? I'll take him out and... Oh, man. Now that's... That's a fish. That's a fish. That's two of them today I've got. Show them to the camera. Oh, man. That is a fish. That is gator fishing here at Cag Lake. My goodness. Oh, that was, that was fantastic. This officially is my best pike fishing ever. I wanna thank Malcolm Lewenberger and Cag Lake Lodge for inviting us. And Derek Cressman, man, what a time, what a time. It's been great, Bill. For more information on this show and others in our series, visit us on the web at thenewflyfisher.com. From all of us here at The New Fly Fisher, thanks for joining us. Tight lines, and we'll see you next time. The New Fly Fisher has been made possible thanks to the support of Algoma Country, That Real. Ontario, yours to discover. Orvis Sporting Traditions. Islander Precision Reels. Rail Riders Outdoor Clothing, the toughest clothes on the planet. Net Staff, the world's first wading staff and net. To learn more about the new fly fisher, our locations, contests, news, and much more, come visit and like us on Facebook. <laughs>